Welcome back to part two of the bridge build. I just recently got back from Prince Edward Island and found this cool little sticker to put on my bandsaw. I used to collect them over there on the cabinet, but I'm going to start putting them on here instead, I think. All right, we're back at the bridge, and the next step is going to be to make the railing. I'm using 4x4 pressure treated posts for that, and the next step is going to be to put in my center post, which is going to require some special cuts on the bandsaw, and I'll show you how it's done. Now over on this side you can see what happened is that my spacing blocks are offset. So over here the block is offset of center, which is right here. So what I'll do is simply use the best template I have, which is what's in front of me, and it doesn't need to be complex measuring. I can just simply lay this on at the halfway point, mark for my notch, and then I'll clear that out on the bandsaw. This is a really good time to complete some cleaning on my saw and do a quick blade change for resawing. So now I've got two upright 4x4s that look very different. One with a side notch and one with a center mortise in here. But that's okay because we're just building off the temp. Yes, Rusty, we hear you. We're building off the template that's in front of us. So we just hold it up, measure it, and go from there. It doesn't need to be rocket science. These upright railing posts are just temporarily held in place with a few screws. Later on I'll buy proper galvanized leg bolts and drive them in through the outside and even block out the posts on the inside. So I've got my two starter railing posts up in the center and that's what I'm going to work off of. I'll finish the blocking through the center on the two sides, and then I'll put up my other two upright railing posts. Now I've temporarily tacked on this little bracer board here, or template board as I'll call it, because what I'm going to do is pick up the angle of that arch by tracing it onto this board, and that'll give me a template later on to achieve my curved railing by using this template. Well, I just about walked away from this and I caught what would have been a really big mistake. When I'm going to trace this template board onto a 2x6 or whatever I choose for a railing, I have to make sure that my arch is going to pick up the next 4x4 four four upright. And I had the upright down beyond the arch, so it was just very important to make sure that the 4x4 four four is going to land right about here so that it will pick up the arch in between. And that railing is just going to be an inlay half lap on the inside, but you'll see that later. Get these guys some worms. I think one of the important things to talk about is the process that I've been taking to build this bridge. And what I'm referring to there is that I could have edited this video into a nice clean progression of the build process, but in reality, I'm a busy guy with a family. Some days are good days for digging in the ground, and some days I have time to just put two posts on the bridge. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, and I've decided just to show that process and the way that life works. Okay, so what we have here is the plan of how I'm going to do some of the groundwork. Essentially, 
I'm going to put rebar into the ground and then I'm going to drop on these little skids of two by three uh, dimensional lumber over the rebar. That'll create a back wall and then uh, the bridge can come and sit on top of the gravel in this box. And it'll actually uh, give me a barrier because it'll all be backfilled with gravel all the way around. So it'll provide proper drainage out underneath the bridge. What'll be nice is that I can actually tack the edge of the bridge into those skids, either by leg bolt or screws. So let's go build that. Now what you're seeing here is call lumber from my local big box store. Call lumber typically has a few defects, but it's a lot cheaper on the wallet and really it's not gonna affect what I'm using it for. Now I've drilled two holes in either end of a piece of that call lumber and I'm inserting rebar into the ground. This will be my template for all the other skids which will go on top. This is likely one of my best shop projects that I've ever made, my drill press table. It allows me to make repeated cuts on either end of the piece of wood perfectly centered. Perfect for an application like this. So I think the one good thing with this rebar system is that I actually have them bent inward just slightly so that it'll apply pressure on the uh, two by three wood when it goes on. And what's great about that is I'm out of level, but in order to bring it up, it's really, really strong and rigid. So once I raise that right side level, which is right there, pack that full of gravel, hit it down, it's likely never gonna come out of level because of the force of the rebar. And that's why we do it. Here's a good view here of uh, a second course of rebar that I put in with a, a dead man brace. Essentially what that'll do is when I backfill with gravel, uh, any ability or want for this to go forward will be uh, held up a little bit more at least with this second rebar with the gravel around it. So hopefully it serves its job. Safety glasses first. Uh, I have a little bit of time here before supper, and it's beautiful out, the kids are playing, so I think I'm just going to go out and get the staining done while they're out there around me, because we have about an hour here before supper, and that's what I'm talking about, about just fitting in time to do whatever you can here and there, and eventually it gets done. One downfall to this project is that I'm using primarily spruce lumber. It's important when you're using spruce lumber to get stain on the lumber as early in the build as you can to protect it from any elements. <laughs> I suppose one unfortunate thing is that no one's really going to see what I'm even doing here as it's all going to be covered by deck boards, but it just comes back to preserving the wood once again. All right, and with a new day, it's time to pick some lumber to make the two boxes that will go as bridge supports on either end. These are also going to help raise the bridge six inches, which will give a better arc effect. This is one neat part of my shop. It's my stop block for repeated cuts. So it allows me to set a preset and then put the lumber or material into it and then easily make a repeated cut. That constructive adhesive may not be required, but it's certainly going to help, especially where there's a lot of foot traffic on top of the bridge. Or at least I hope there's a lot of traffic.
that's going to be a wrap for part two. Everything looks great. The new boxes that I've made are in their spot, not their permanent spot. I still have to remove them and do all the grade work to make everything level. And I'll also stain them the same as the bridge. Uh, after that, we're going to move on to part three, which you're not going to want to miss. That's my favorite part of this whole build, which is coming up. And you'll have to stick around to find out what's going to happen. Thanks.